okay now we show you how you get ready to use the pump so we got a vo voltage regulator because again the pump was made in europe so it was made for 220 we use 110 here in the states so we just use our voltage regulator then take your cable plug it in now we can test if our pump is working so yep, you can do it again it's working beautifully working smooth so we can turn this off and uh, now once our power supply is ready so i'll show you one more thing on the back of the pump so you can see on the back of the pump we have our air supply and our external tank so for our air supply you will need probably 60 to 80 psi supply and you don't have to worry about it because it's got a build on the back of the back of the pump there's a pressure regulator which one regulates the tank to exactly what the pump is built for and it also have a moisture separator built into it so you don't have to worry about it the pumps get damaged or you get any moisture in the air it's all taken care of that with our external tank supply so that's the fr2 pump it's got a dual tanks inside but you also can purchase external tanks and you can you know the tanks come as a dual so you can buy two four or six tanks eight tanks ten as many you want but the beauty of that is you can use the same pump with the just you know buy extra tanks with different multiple fluids you 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 can run multiple fluids and just use this through the same same pump so you don't have to have multiple pumps and for using with different fluids that's the beauty of this machine so we are ready to use it and we show you how we continue with that so as part of the accessories for our okay pumps you know if you already have adapters from different model of pumps most of the pumps using the same fittings the same adapters if not we sell this nice package and it has a uh, adapters for pretty much all the all the brands all the sharks out there from kyb shova wp orleans and most of this so it should work everything you need to then also another part you can purchase from us it's this air separator which is a beautiful tool not too many you know pump makers or companies using this this is again beautiful tool you put this you know it goes between the shock and the line so when you turn the pump on and uh, you can see everything is going on inside the shock like how much air it's pulling out of there you can adjust the vacuum on there and since this is the air separator so all the air all the bubble stays on the top of there so you have to you know for sure when you breathe in the shock or already feeling back in you know for sure there's no air bubble staying in the shock because all the bubbles are pushed out to the top of the top of the separator so with this tool you know for sure there's definitely no air and it's 100 percent clear so it's a beautiful tool it's definitely worth it to have it now we show you so we are getting ready to use the pump but uh we hook up our airline today our power is hooked up but before we start there's two ways you can do this to fill the shocks we prefer for everybody like this shock was just completely serviced we you know put new seals in there new seal head service the revolve there so it's ready to be pretty much vacuum and and uh, pull a vacuum bit bleed the shock and also refill back so we fill the shock as much you know pretty much we pre-fill the shock with oil that way you can prevent that from so you don't have to constantly to fill the tanks and the pump with oil after the use most of the time as you can see on the side of that we have a minimum mark and maximum mark it probably holds around 1.5 liters of oil it's uh it's kind of important for you know stay between the minimum and maximum marks if you go below the minimum the chances are you can actually suck the air and if you overfill that over the max line then it's pu it's possible that the pump can suck the oil into the pump so again it's definitely worth it if when you service in the shark you already pre-fill that with oil and that way you don't have to continuously but we will show you how to do it so you take your allen head tool we open the suck it open the filler very simple open it up we use a little funnel and 
we will fill it up with the oil to our maximum line. I mean, this is plenty for now. So we clean this off. Put a plug back. Okay, now we hook up our line and a separator. So I'm gonna take the separator, get up to the top of it. So again, like I was saying, it's important for the separator to face in up, so be in an upward position. Take a line. So since we filled, it, filled the oil to the tank number one, so we plug this in tank number one. And install the line on the top. So now what we can do, we're still gonna equalize the the, the oil and the pressure inside. So first thing, before you even start the machine, what we always do, you open the compression and the rebound adjuster all the way to the fully open. Because you wanna, you wanna let the fluid freely floating between the shim stocks and the, and the, the valving and everything and then and the compression side and the rebound side. So it it's can be fully achieve what, you, you know, what you're looking for. So now we have all, our, all of our lines hooked up and before we start, use, you know, turn the vacuum on, we need to make sure. So our knob is into the internal tanks. We need to equalize the pressure. Even the shark gets pre-filled with oil, we still want to make sure it's completely full of oil. So we're going to turn the pressure, pressure on and it's going to force the oil come completely to the shark. So the, we wait for a second. Okay, now the system is completely full. It's pressurized with oil. So we're gonna turn this off. And before we, we turn the vacuum on, we have to blow off the pressure out of the system. So we're gonna blow this off. And you watch the gauge go down to the zero. That way you know there's definitely no pressure in the system. Okay, now all the pressure is gone. We close the valve over here to the off position. We can turn the pump, we can put in the vacuum and turn the pump on. So you can see the vacuum start immediately, immediately pulling in. Now you can see what's going in the shark, how the shave starts coming in. We can correct the vacuum because it was a little bit too strong. This is, a, this is another nice feature on the on this machine because you can manually control the vacuum as much you need to pull. Because sometimes when you get to the minus one, you pull in too much vacuum, and especially with type of machines where you just have the line and it's not clear or something where you cannot see what's going on inside and you can see clearly start pulling the air out of that the bubbles sometimes you pull too much vacuum and then the shark start sucking air around the o-rings or seals and then you never know it's happening and then you can you know do your do your shark 
multiple times until you get it done right. So with this, like I said, we can go to minus one and we can slowly, if we need to, we can reduce the vacuum because it's got a bleed of valve built on the pump, not in the system. So we need to reduce the vacuum a little bit. We can do that and we can watch the separator and you can see where there's barely any bubbles coming up. So usually you can wait around probably two, three minutes to let it run, let it do this thing. And then we switch this back to the filling. Okay, so we have the pump running for probably two, somewhere around two or three minutes. And now we can actually turn the pump to the off position, turn it off. And now this is very important step. So now you want to turn the pressure and the oil to fill the shug in, but you have to do that like really slowly. You don't want to just open the valve and just kind of force big pressure, you know, big pressure and a lot of amount of the uh, oil coming into that. So you just slowly start opening the gently and you can watch the separator and watch the shaft. How this slowly start coming up. So now you can see the, the pressure start equalizing inside. And we usually reach into the maximum pressure. Okay, now we are fully equalized. It's it's fully filled with oil in there, but we like to do the do the whole process maybe do it twice just to be make sure it's it's some properly so I'm gonna again close it off blow off the pressure now there's no pressure at all in there so I'm gonna turn it off and I'm gonna turn the pump on for another probably just a minute or two to run this again make sure it's no air bubble in there So you can see and now it's fully filled. It's usually a good sign when the shaft kind of gets pulled nice and slowly inside. I mean, the shark is proper, properly bled. And you're usually gonna see some bubbles coming up because once the piston is forced in, so it's gonna create some bubbles in there. And like I said, you can watch this on the separator, probably in a let around for a minute or two. Once the air gets cleared and everything, then we're going to switch the pressure and fill it up again. Sep separator is pretty clear. So that means system pretty clear. There's no, no more air left in there. So we can turn this to the off position and turn on pump off. Once we turn this off, Again, we're gonna pressurize there. So we put our air button to the pressure position and slowly, kind of say gently open there to make sure it gets slowly filled in. So we stop our vacuum. And like I said, we need to slowly fill this, fill the shock with the air again. I mean, and the oil. So you gently start opening the pressure valve. So you can see it's getting full. Now when it's fully open, you can also grab the shock by the shaft, push on this, push it all the way in. As you can see there's no bubbles coming up. It's coming nice, nice and evenly, slowly out. So that's a good sign. So everything looks pretty nice and clear. Perfect. So now we're gonna turn this to the off position and blow off the blow off the pressure. So we're gonna put this to the it's 
so as you can see it's in the blow position now we already measure our with our special tool we measure our piston height so we measure that and usually most of the WP pistons they go anywhere around 8 to 10 millimeters so it was around 95 so I'll push it to like 88 And while it's in the blow-off position, you can take your tool, drive it in, and set the piston height while you have everything hooked up to the system. So that way you don't make mess and... Okay, now it's set, so there's no waste of oil. Everything is nice in the system, you don't lose any, any oil, and it's easily, perfectly run. So, I'm going to turn this off. Unplug this from the machine. It's a nice quick connector, 